So folks, my goodness, everyone is talking about a shocking discovery around Old Donnie, hidden away in locked filing cabinets and in other places that have been discovered by law enforcement. So hit the like and subscribe button because it really helps me out and we're going to jump right into it because everyone is saying what was just discovered, guys, in addition to the big fat mouth of Old Donnie yapping about what his evil plans are, what's been discovered changes everything and shows everyone from politicians to judges to regular folks just how maniacal this monster is watch all of this i got about three or four clips here they are maybe the most important clips i have ever shown you everyone matters and we're going to break it down after about what was hidden away locked away by old donnie Joining me now is former U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder. There's so much to discuss here, and I, I think so many people are trying to really understand it. Let me just start with this gag order. Do you think looking at this, Judge Chutkin reinstated the gag order after she uh, put a pause on it. It's still under appeal. Are you confident or do you feel comfortable with her legal justification for reinstating it? Yeah, I certainly think there's a, a basis for her concern. I think there's a basis for the order that she has, uh, in fact, put in place. My expectation would be that the appellate court will, in fact, uphold that which she has um, tried to restrain the former president from doing. It's a pretty limited order. Mm -hmm. um, it does not say that you can't say anything. It says you can only say you can't say negative things about a relatively small universe of, of people. You can even comment on the case. Um, but... I think, as you said in, in Leiden, uh, I think he's likely to go beyond that, which um, even she says in that limited order. And we're going to have some ultimate questions that I think are going to have to be determined. Um, would a judge actually do that, which would happen to a normal person and yeah. put somebody in jail for violating uh, a, an order not to uh, a, a, a gag order? Uh, I suspect that's not likely to happen um, with this defendant, but any other defendant uh, would probably be facing... You don't think that she would put him in jail or that they would decide to put him in jail ultimately? I, I, I just don't think so. I mean, I, I think there are a number of things you put monetary fines on him, as the judge did um, in New York, uh, perhaps restrict his ability to use truth social. Um, you know, I don't, a number of things. I try to be as creative as possible if I were the judge. But I'd be extremely reluctant to take um, a person who's a former president, the leading candidate um, of one of our major parties, and, and actually put him in jail. Because you'd be worried about the political consequences or the reaction in the country? Yeah, I mean, this is already a pretty divided nation, and to uh, do something like that, to take somebody off the campaign trail, uh, to put him in jail, uh, I, I just would be very reluctant, uh, really reluctant to do that. Now, it seems like the, the uh, Trump's lawyers are going to continue to appeal this. Mm -hmm. it, would this ultimately, the gag order, could this ultimately end up at the Supreme Court, a decision in a, about whether or not a gag order against a former president is legal? It conceivably could. I mean, this is a federal case. The Supreme Court has ultimate jurisdiction over all, you know, federal matters. So it's possible that this gag order could go before the Supreme Court. I would think, again, though, that this is not the kind of thing that typically ends up before the Supreme Court. And I would think that it would probably, you'd probably resolve it at the appellate court level, at the, the mm. in front of the D.C. the D.C. Circuit. So what are the other options this judge has? This is kind of what everybody is wondering. None of these fines are working. Mm -hmm. Trump is not you know, he's continuing to attack people. We all expect him to continue to. If he's not, if she's not going to put him in jail or she shouldn't, what can they do? Well, I'd maybe increase the level of fines. Um, you know, I, I think the judge in New York started at maybe $5,000. Yeah. I think it's $25,000. Maybe you start imposing fines that even for a person who claims to be a billionaire will have, um, you know, some kind of some kind of impact. Hundreds of thousands of dollars in terms of the, the fines that uh, that might be levied. You know, there is a uh, we also learned today of an Alabama man. I mentioned this as well, who was indicted for threatening Fulton County District Attorney and, and a sheriff regarding Trump's Georgia election case. I'm wondering, I mean, you have you have watched hate speech. You've watched the impact of Trump's rhetoric. How what is the connection? Do you see a connection there between the allowance of these type of threats, what Trump is doing out there publicly and these type of threats against uh, people like Fonnie Willis? Yeah, I, I think these these comments by the former president have to be viewed as attacks in two ways. One, on the system itself, and that has to be dealt with. But it also um, creates an environment in which the kinds of things you've just described, where threats are made against people involved in the case, um, are taken seriously by malcontents, nutcases, um, lone wolves. 
I know you probably don't find yourself agreeing with Bill Barr often, I suspect, um, but we did just listen to kind of what he had to say. And I'm wondering what you make of his comments about Trump's pledges for retribution and, and the chaos that could cause. I mean, what scares you most about what he could do if he were in a position of naming a new attorney general, overseeing a Department of Justice? Yeah, I think that Attorney General Barr actually has it right there. And this is one of the few instances where I would agree with him, though I would ask him, you know, you knew this about this guy before mm -hmm. you decided to be his attorney general. And so, yeah, I mean, I'm obviously concerned about what he can do between now and the election. And were he to win the election, uh, I'm really concerned about what he would do to the rule of law, to our system of justice, uh, to the United States Department of Justice that is, you know, near and dear to me. Um, there is nothing that I would put beyond uh, what Donald Trump would do in order to save himself, in order to ensure that um, his interests are protected and those who are his supporters are, are protected. And you would, in essence, I think, you know, I think the former attorney general is also right. You would be getting not the second team, not the third team. You'd be getting the fourth team in a, a new Trump administration. And so as bad as things might have been, you know, four years or so ago before, I suspect they would be even worse. Um, after tw starting in 2025. On Sunday, the federal judge overseeing the case surrounding Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election, Judge Tanya Chutkin, she reinstated a gag order on Mr. Trump. Judge Chutkin first issued a limited gag order exactly two weeks ago today on October 16th. But she paused the gag order at the request of Trump's lawyers who are in the process of appealing it. And then there was a nine day pause in which the special counsel's team later argued that Trump wasted no time in attacking federal prosecutors and potential key witnesses, including his former chief of staff, Mark Meadows. With yesterday's ruling, the former president is now barred again from making any remarks targeting witnesses, prosecutors or court staff. To be clear, this gag order is separate and apart from the one imposed in his New York civil fraud case in which Trump has been fined $15,000 for violating it not once, but twice. Maybe it's a pattern. Because after Judge Chudkin imposed the gag order today, Trump again went on the attack, going after former Attorney General Bill Barr, a potential key witness in this case. He called the judge a, quote, Trump hater, and he threatened President Biden with payback almost all of which might be a violation of said gag order. With gag orders like this, who needs gag orders? Joining me now is Joyce Vance, former district attorney for the Northern District of Alabama. Joyce, thank you for being here. Please help me understand whether we are barreling towards a stress test of bail conditions. Is it, are, are judges gonna have to take up in earnest the question of whether they need to jail a former president ahead of a trial? So I think as reluctant as the judges will be to do anything that would look like interference in the election, ultimately Donald Trump seems intent on pushing these buttons. He's had a lot of opportunity to walk it back. Instead, he continues to advance his conduct. For instance, Alex, just leaving up some of these earlier posts, the post about Mark Meadows, which the last time I looked at Truth Social was still up and had not been taken down. That would be a violation of the gag order at this point. So Trump is not going to make life easy for any of the judges here. Uh, t today, the DOJ announced that they were indicting an Alabama man for transmitting interstate threats. He had left threatening phone messages for D.A. Fonnie Willis. Do you think the DOJ is trying to convey its seriousness in terms of uh, threatening behavior in and around this case? And is that a, a subtle message to Donald Trump? I don't think that there's anything subtle about it. DOJ has always taken an aggressive stance about protecting witness safety in every case. This is the sort of issue, and I can tell you on the handful of cases that I was involved in where there were threats to witnesses, people in a U.S. attorney's office drop everything. They put their heads together. They figure out how to protect the witness, whether they need to go back into court. These matters are taken very seriously. And so the U.S. attorney in Atlanta took a look at this threat, went ahead and indicted the case very quickly, will pursue it very vigorously. Donald Trump needs to understand that there is a line that you cannot cross over here and that he has become perilously close to it. 
Tonight, a gag order back on for Donald Trump. The judge overseeing the DOJ's election interference trial reinstating a ban on Trump, saying anything that targets special counsel's team, the special counsel's team or potential witnesses applies. Statements that drew the judge's ire in the first place include Trump's truth social social media posts like this one, quote, all caps, if you go after me, I'm coming after you. Well, out front now, Trump's uh, former White House lawyer, Ty Cobb, Ty, I appreciate your time. So the judge is now reimposing this gag order to stop Trump from making public statements like I just mentioned. But then right after she made the ruling, he goes and he posts about his former attorney general, Bill Barr. And I quote, Ty, I call Bill Barr dumb, weak, slow, moving, lethargic, gutless and lazy and all caps rhino who couldn't do the job. Bill Barr obviously is um, relevant in all these cases, obviously a, a potential witness. Did Trump already violate the gag order? Yes. I mean, it's, it's a simple order. It's, you know, it's less than, a, I mean, it's a, it's a short paragraph, uh, but it prohibits him from targeting any foreseeable witness or the substance of their testimony. And clearly he's done that. Now, even while it was in abeyance, he did it as to Ellis, Chesbro, Powell, and um, uh, Meadows. Um, and he'll keep doing it until uh, he provokes, uh, you know, a penalty far greater than uh, he's suffered so far in the process. So Trump's New York fraud trial is mean. Um, Ty, one other thing I wanted to ask you about, just as a, as a quick follow here before we go, on, on the point about the gag order, what do you think is sure. next, right? I mean, so the gag order went away for nine days. It gets reinstated. It says these things about Bill Barr. What he got fined $10,000 uh, for him, that's, you know, pennies. And no matter what his real wealth is, it's still pennies. Um, so what, 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 where does he end up on this? Well, the New York judge fined him $10,000. That's in a civil case. You know, that's not as consequential as Judge Chutkin's case. I think yep. Judge Chutkin, um, you know, prudently allowed Trump to try to persuade her to extend the gag order. Uh, she concluded, you know, on the basis of his conduct this week, not to do so. <laughs> and uh, I think she'll come in with a much heavier uh, uh, penalty. And ultimately, I think he'll, you know, spend a night or a weekend in jail. Wow. I think it's going to take that. I think it will take that to, you know, to stop him. Wow. That'll be an incredible thing to actually see happen. But you think that's where it goes? I do. All right, Ty Cobb, thank you very much. I appreciate it as great, always. Good great, to see you. Great to talk with you, Aaron. All right. So you can see you have everybody there. Some of them conservative types used to work for Trump, used to be allies of Trump in some cases. Sometimes they've been, you know, people on the other side of the aisle or people that are coming more from a scholarly perspective. Really, it runs the whole spectrum. And what they're saying is this man is dangerous. He's shown he's dangerous through his actions. And what police have found in Trump's filing cabinets at Trump Tower and everywhere else in his campaign, locked away in the bathrooms and filing cabinets of Mar-a-Lago that have been discovered by cops, is that this man has an evil plan. And as noted there by a former Obama official, there is nothing this man will not do to get and preserve and, and, and hit power, but also use that power to save himself. So if you, whatever you can think, it's that much uglier. And what's been hidden away in these perverse filing cabinets, the secret plans of Donald Trump are so much worse even than what he's saying in public. Get ready to stop this monster before it's too late.